Hey, y'all. Just waiting a moment or two for people to get the notifications. If you are here, go ahead and type in the chat. Yes, it's on. Hello. Who else is here? Hey. Hello. Hey. Good morning. Where y'all from? Where's everybody tuning in from? Dope. Cool, cool. All right. Peru, hello. The sip in the building, okay. Nice, nice. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, we got London here. I'm glad you all are staying safe. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, what we're going to do, I had this idea for this series to be like these um, these little recipes, right? So I've been enjoying cooking while I've been home. Most of you know that I'm mostly on the road a lot of times. So um, I don't get to be home as much. So I've been cooking and stuff. And it got me to thinking like a lot of the things that we do in tech, this better not be boring. Oh, my God. Okay, so now I have to entertain too. <laughs> um but yeah, like, so a lot of the things that we do in tech and in coding are also um, like these little algorithms or recipes, if you will, right? My specialty is automation. So that's what we're going to be focused on in this series. So I'm going to just get like, you know, some typical um, things that you need to automate, typical tasks that are not like immediately obvious, so it'll be things that, you know, we'll work on here in the live. You'll see me work through the problems. We'll struggle together. Um, you all will help me when I mess up. All right. Um, today, I want to focus on doing the date picker. So the date picker component, let me show you. Um, I'm going to show my screen. Hey, I'm going to show my screen. Um, hello, hello. Oh, another little heads up. So I'm doing this across like multiple platforms right now. We have Twitch, we have YouTube, we have um, Periscope slash Twitter. And I'm going to stream across like all of these. Hopefully it works. This is my first time doing it. So we'll see. Um they tell me like I'm splitting you guys up. So you're in different like groups or whatever. So the YouTube folks are hanging out. The Twitch folks are hanging out. Um, so I'll try to like bring us all together. And if I see like there's a million people on YouTube and like two people on Twitch, maybe I'll just stick to one stream. So give me that feedback when we finish um, based on like what it is that which platform you're using let me know if yeah it was cool I had fun with the people there or oh I was lonely and I'm there by myself thank you so much shout out to everybody who like stayed up um <laughs> in the middle of the night to come and hang out with me I am forever grateful I really appreciate you um I'll try to make this fun for you and that that's a funny thing like these whole time zone things um Dates and things like that, that's really tricky for programming. So when you're working in like development, people hate like dates. It's really difficult to deal with. All right. So shout out again um, to our sponsor, Apple Tools. They'll be sponsoring this so that, you know, I can do this content for you all for free. All right. So let's jump into the thick of things. I am going to um, go ahead and show my screen. And uh, I'll show you this date picker. Hold on a second. Let me get it up. Let 
All right, let's see what this does. All right, so this is the date picker. Um, very simple, basic little component, right? And what we're going to do today is we're going to automate the selection of any date from a date picker. So this is something that we typically need to do if we're going to automate tests that contain um, choosing a date within the flow of that test. So we're just going to focus. Our recipes are going to be very focused so that we can go really deep. I'm going to be coding live here. Um, messing up and fixing things. So this is what we're going to focus on today. All right. So for starters, sometimes these day pickers, this area right here, um, let me go in the DOM. This is disabled. And a lot of times developers will disable this because, like I said, Choosing dates is very, very <laughs> tricky business, right? Um, dealing with dates in code is tricky business. So allowing people to like free form enter text, a whole bunch of checks that need to come in, even without like bad data, just making sure that the format is right and all of that is really, really tough. So a lot of times people will disable the part that you actually comment in so that you can choose it using the widget itself and you can make sure that th the date is actually correct and in the correct format. So to start off, if you're lucky enough, I've just taken out the disable part. If you're lucky enough that you have this text field and it's edible, you can just type in the date, making sure that it's in the right format that your application is expecting it to be in. If that happens, you're good to go. And <laughs> You don't have to worry about the rest. But for everybody else, for the rest of us, most of the times this is not. So that's what we're going to focus on today. All right. Okay. So let me get the code going. Um, let's see. Can y'all see? Everybody tell me if you were able to see and stuff like that. Uh, oh, lots of comments. Hey. Yeah, okay, right? Okay, cool. All right. Somebody asked, which webcam am I using? Because I'm sharp AF. Is sharp a bad thing? Is that a bad thing or a good thing? I'm just using my default Mac uh, webcam. And I, like, dusted off the thing so you can actually see me. <laughs> um. All right, so let's let's let me show my IDE. Um, okay, I'm just gonna say this, and we'll see what that does. And I'm gonna move this over here. There we go. Very nice. All right, so here's my IDE. And um, what we're going to do here is go ahead and start trying to automate against it. So the only thing that I have so far is this base test thing, um, this base test class. And all this does is launches the browser before any test and then closes the browser after test. So that's all I have so far. And we're going to go ahead and write the rest. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create like a test, um, a package, a test class for this or whatever. So we'll call this um, date picker. And inside of date picker, I'm going to add a new class and we'll just call this, I don't know, um, date picker test. Keep it simple, right? All right. And um, I'm going to extend that base test class so that we'll have that browser stuff for free. And we're going to create the first test. Somebody, I want to do three tests, basically. I want to do a past date, a future date, and a current date. So somebody give me some dates. Y'all put some dates in the chat. Um, so we'll say past date. And let's do two more for future and current.
All right. So I got, give me the year two. Give me the year with it too. So somebody give me a past day. Everybody's giving me something in the future. I know y'all ready to get out the house, child, but give me something from the past. All right. September. Oh, that sounds sad. Um, okay. December. Let's do that one. <laughs> Thanks somebody like give me 9-11. I'm not trying to cry today. All right. December 20th, 1989. It's probably somebody's birthday. All right. Future. When we getting out the house. That's your birthday. <laughs> somebody give me a future. Do, do, do. Mm -mm -mm. Somebody said February 29th. Very funny. That actually works for this year, right? Um, okay, August 3rd, 2020. And um, today's date is current. We already know what that is. All right. So let's focus on the past date first. So when I'm writing my test, I like to just like think through the test itself because it's really hard for us developers when we're switching between like development mode and test mode. Like um, you start <laughs> forgetting stuff and maybe you might miss some assertions and things like that. So I like to just get my thoughts out first. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, let's say we want to specify or we want to select a date, right? Uh, select a date. And then we're going to um, verify that date, right? So we'll have like an expected date and then select that date and then verify. Very straightforward. All right. So I'm going to use, I hate like even dealing with dates in Java. And I think Java 8 is when they released. Um, hold on a second. Java 8 is when they released the um, new new kind of date stuff. So we're going to use like this local date, which I haven't played with much. But let's see what this does. So we can do local date. Um, and you can say of. And we can give the year, the month, and the day of the month. So for the year, we said that would be 1989. And for the month, we said December. So I think there's a, yeah, month that December. And then for the day of the month, 20, right? Okay. So we'll assign this to a variable and we'll say this is the um, maybe expect um, date to select. Let's just call it date to select. All right. Cool. Now we want to select the date. So what I want to do is I want to create a component for this. So if we go back to um, this date picker, this component can be anywhere in your application. Most times when you have something like this, it's reused across multiple pages. And even though I have this on a single page, usually this is embedded into like a larger page. So I don't want to try to recreate this in every single like page object class that I have, for example. Instead, I want to do something like a component that um, we can reuse for any test. OK, so I'm going to say I'm going to make a new um, date picker component. We haven't created it yet. And in there, I'm going to want to a method called something like choose month where I give it, I'm not choose month, choose date. And then I give it the date to select. All right. And um, then we're going to verify that. So we'll do an assert equals with the date to select and then like something from the date picker, right? Um, the, the date that's actually there. Okay. All right, so that's the template that we're going to follow. Let's go ahead and start building this out. So I'm going to create this new date picker class. I'm going to go over here to the main section. So under the main section, this is where I would create like my package for the pages. But this time, I want to do um, this as a component. 
And we'll create the new class in here called, uh, we'll just call it Day Picker. All right. Now, I already know in order to deal with the browser, I'm going to need a web driver. So let's go ahead and make a constructor. And this guy will take the driver and we'll import this. Great. And then let's go ahead and create this driver too. So web driver. And sorry for my typing, y'all. I can't go to the nail shop because they got me on lockdown. So my nails are getting like really long and it's not great for typing. All right. Bed. Okay, so we have our constructor and we know we wanted that little one method that says to um, choose the month, choose the date. All right, so let's do this and this needs to take a date, right? So we'll say public void, choose date, and this takes a local date. And all right, so let's think through this. If we go back to our picker again, the very first thing, when we come here, we need to open this. So I need to click on this, right? So um, let's go ahead and say first we want to open. And let's create this method. I'm going to make it public. So I these little inside methods, like, I think about should they be public, should they be private? I make them public if I don't mind the test calling them the self, themselves. So the test ideally would call this choose date, but that's for like happy path stuff. Sometimes you might want to do tests where you're like mucking around, um, you're breaking stuff. And so I like to keep these as like small individual um, methods or functions so that your test can have free reign with them. All right. So for the openness, we need to click on this thing. So let's look for the locator for this. Um, so we have an icon. We have a button. It doesn't have an ID. Such is life. Yes. Um, if I go up, this doesn't have an ID. This is a sibling, but it has an ID. And this whole div, I'm not feeling that because it, like, expands the whole thing. So I'm going to stick to, like, this widget. So I'm going to say, let's find um, something with the ID date picker. Um, and I want to do sibling. CSS selector, like, axes and stuff, I, like, have a hard time remembering. Anybody remember what the sibling, what the locator is for sibling? Y'all are chatting up a storm, honey. Carlos, what are you not feeling? What are you talking about? <laughs> um, hey, my sister's here. Everybody tell my sister hello. She don't, she's not even in tech. <laughs> but she came. She's so sweet. <laughs> All right. Um, somebody got me? Okay. Sibling. We got a plus sign. We got preceding is for like the X path. Following is for X path. Oh, you weren't feeling that element. Okay. Yeah. Um, somebody say a plus sign or something. All right. Let's try it out. Um, So date picker and plus sign, is that right? And I'm, I'm probably just going to Google this in a minute. Um, <laughs> date picker plus sign, and let's see what else we got. Date picker, and we want a button, right? Um, button? No, that doesn't work. This? This? Where y'all at? Adjacent is minus. Okay. Now that don't work. 
following sibling, use a space for a sibling. They pick her. Okay. I'm sure I've like Googled this a million times. So let's look, let's go. Thank y'all for trying to help. Like nothing is working. So let's see. Um, uh, CSS selector for sibling. See, I'm always over here. Um, okay. So a child, an adjacent, and a general. I want general. So let's do um, squirrely. <laughs> is that it? It's like a space with it. I'm an expat girl. I'm using CSS because I didn't want y'all to drag me. But I'm about to like go to what I know. Um, let me see. Oh, something like this. A child, an adjacent, a general. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So I said, oh, it's a span. Span is the, the sibling and then the button. Um, there we go. All right. Okay. All right. So this is the selector for that button. So let's grab this. We're going to add a buy for this. Um, and we'll call this the open calendar button. Yes. All right. Cool. So I want to say driver dot find that button and then click it. All right. Here's the thing, though. So this is a toggle. Anytime I deal with toggles then I, um, I make sure that I, I, it's not already in the state that it's in. Because if I just, let's say that this is already open, like the test before it left it open or something like that. And I come here and I say open it. Well, open just clicks. It has no idea if it's already open or not. So I, I see if it actually is open um, or in the state before doing anything. So I'm just going to say um, if is calendar open if not right so if it's not open then go ahead and click it and so we need to make this method too so we'll say boolean and then let's get the handle for this calendar to see if it's visible or not um, all right so, again, no ID, no fun here. So, okay, we want um, a div that has a row. Is it like this? Row, row equals, is it calendar? Mm. And I lost the element. All right. Div row calendar. So I think uh, no add. That's expat. Yeah. All right. So here we go. And uh, let's see if this has any style changes when it's visible versus not visible. Hopefully it has like, a little style. Yes. So you see how this is updating right here, this display none. That means Selenium will be able to tell this for me. And by the way, I'm <laughs> in case you didn't know yet, I'm using Java with Selenium Web Driver. These recipes, it's more about like the thought process. So you can utilize the um, concept with any language or any um, automation tool. All right. So let's copy this. And basically, we're going to see if it's displayed or not. So we're going to say private by calendar equals by also CSS selector. And then we're going to say return driver dot find the calendar and let us know if it's displayed. OK, so if this is not already open, it opens it. All right, good to go. So the next thing, once we're open, we need to figure out like where we are. So it shows the current month, which today the current month is April 2020, but we don't know like 
when this test runs in the future, with which month it'll be on, okay? Or if like some other tests already set it to something where it will be. So um, let's let's go ahead. The next thing we want to do is like select the month, right? Month plus year. Um, so let's create another method. Um, inside of this choose date, we're going to say choose month. And in choose month, since it requires both the month and the year, I'm just going to give it the whole date here. We haven't made this yet either. So let's make that. All right. And I'm going to make it public. So choosing the month. All right. Very first thing we need to do. Let's just think this through. So we need to figure out where we are, right? So let's let's go ahead and say figure or get. We don't even have to figure it out. Get current month. These nails, honey. And then um, compare that. Compare. Um, pair um, current month with the, I'm going to call this like the destination, compare current with destination. And then that will tell us like if we need to stay right here on this month, if we need to go in the past or if we need to go in the future. Because if we need to go in the past, we need to click on this arrow. And if we need to go in the future, we need to click on that arrow, right? So we need to know like which which direction we need to go in. So which arrow to use and then how many times to click it. For example, if you said January 2020, then I need to click one, two, three times, right? So we need to figure out that logic, okay? All right, so let's see. We're going to say... Get the current period. So in this choose month, I'm going to say current period equals get current period. And we haven't made this yet. We'll go ahead and make this method. Okay. And this should return, I don't know, should it return a string? Should it return, let's return a date since we're going to need to compare them. So um, what we want to do is get this string. All right, let's refresh this. Get this string and put it into like a date object, a local date object. All right, so let's first get this string. So this is similar to this one. Let's see, period, All right? Okay, so let's add this to our class by, um, I don't know, period equals by CSS selector, great. And then in here, we're gonna say um, string, current period, equals driver dot find the element and get the text of that, right? Okay, so we get the text of that. It's gonna give us April 2020. So we need to like split this text. I need to get the month, I need to get the year. And I don't have a date, so that's kind of tricky. But let's split this. So if I split this, uh, let's change this from a string. We'll make this an array. And split it on, looks like it was a space. Yes, April 2020. So we'll split this on the space. All right. And now I want to return the local date. And we're going to build it out with what we have. So current period. Um, the first one is what? Year, I believe. Yeah, year, month, and date, all right? So the year is the second one. 
So we're going to have to say current period one, because that's the second one, right? And then the month. So that's the first one, <laughs> current period. But we need it as a as a either a number or as an enum. So let me see if I can do. Hold on. Let's do month. Um, something that'll give us a month if we give it a string. So month. Value of sounds very promising. So I give it this. Um, and let's make sure it's in the right state. Because these enums are usually like all caps. See this? And this April is not. So let's make sure we cap this. Um, blah, dot, two uppercase. Look at us. Look at us. Yes, the video will be available. Um, after cross your fingers i hope so all right and then the last one is the date so that's the one that's not even selected so um let's just make something up right here we'll just say get like today's date for example so the last one we'll say local date dot now which is today and yes get the day of the month and then I thought, voila, but we got some errors. So let's see what they're complaining about. Aha. Uh -huh. So this is, even though, so it's saying, like, can I resolve you giving it a string month int? And it should be int, int, int. So this is an array of strings. I need to basically put this year, even though it's 2020, it's actually a string in quotes. So I just need to parse this and make it an integer. So we'll say parse this int and voila. Okay. Okay, great. So that'll give us the current period. So we got that. Now we want to compare that with today's date. So um, there's this little cool utility. Let's say um, int months away equals chrono unit. Anybody used chrono chrono unit before? Um, it has a all, all this stuff. Yeah, like between, so I can like start comparing stuff. Um, is that the one I want? Yeah. So I want to see how many months are there between the current period on the calendar in today in whatever date they wanted us to select. And we got an error. Okay, this is this returns a long instead of an int. That's fine. Whatever. All right, so great. So now we know like the months away, this is important because this will tell us how many times we need to click, right? So let's just go ahead and debug this so far. Um I'm gonna put a little thing right here so we can see what we got going here. So let's see, this takes the driver and we'll comment this part out for now. So this is a lot. <laughs> I can't calculate December 1989. I'm going to put this right back, but let's just say um, this last year because I can count that. Um, how many is that? That is one, two, three, four, four of those. All right. So let's just do that much. Um, and I'm going to debug this. Mm. All right, so this is failing out the gate before we get over there. So let's see what's wrong here. Um, let me debug it right here in the test itself. Let's do this.
Ah, yeah. <laughs> so it's not loading our day picker. I forgot to tell it the to actually load the thing, right? So okay, and um, like I said, base test is only launching the browser. And I'm going to use this same project for all the things we're doing. So it'll be like different websites. So I'm just going to um, say in this class to launch the thing. Launch app. And uh, we'll see. Driver.get. And let's give it this URL. All right, bet. All right, so let's try once more. Did I stop this? All right. Right. <laughs> All right, great. We got our um, page launch. Keep it moving. Let's go to our next breakpoint. Did it finish? Didn't I have another breakpoint? Oh, because this is like not real code, maybe. Um, let's just print something out. Hey, y'all. All right. And let's go here. All right. So it's saying. Um, the difference is four. So is that true? One, two, three, four. Okay. So it looks like we're good so far. Great. Okay. So let's keep it moving. So now we need to figure out which arrow we're going to use, right? Are we going to use the left or are we going to use the right? So. We use the left arrow if it's negative. Notice, remember, it was negative four, um, which means it's in the past. So I can say, I'm going to do like by arrow equals, and I'm going to do a little um, itinerary here. So we'll say if months away is less than zero, meaning it's negative, then go ahead and use the left arrow, which we haven't defined yet. So we'll just say left. Um, let's just call it left arrow. And otherwise, use the right arrow. Okay. So we need to go define both of these. I need some locators. We'll see. Private by left arrow. And let's see what that is. So... Left arrow, we have this little, looks like a font awesome icon or something with no ID, of course, <laughs> um, under this navigator. So what if I did, um, find me the navigator thing that has an I with, um, I, is this, it? does this work? Chevron left. Ah, look at that. All right, and let's make sure right works. Okay, all right, bit, bit, bit. Okay, so let's grab that and um, also CSS selector. And we'll just copy this for the right one. Okay. And change this. Great. All right. Cool. So now we know which arrow to use, right? We are cooking with grease, as the southerners would say. All right. So now that we know that, now we got to click it. <laughs> we got to click it this many times, months away times. So I'm going to do a for loop. For NI, we're going to start at zero, go. Mm. So we need to do like months away, right? Except months away could be negative. So if I said if it's like less than months away, then it might not run if it's in the past. So I need to get like the absolute value of that. Yes. Um, months away. 
So that way, like, even though it's negative four, we're going to go through this four times, right? Great. Okay. And then all we need to do is say, click that, click that um, arrow, find the arrow and click it, click it, click it, click it a bunch of times. And I think that's it for the month part. Um, great. Okay. So now we've gotten to the month. Last thing we need to do is just select the date, right? Here's the thing, though, with date pickers. You got to be, like, really careful. Um, let me choose. This is a good example. So let's say I wanted to choose January 30th. And if we click here, we see there's a div that has like 30th inside of it, right? If I said find me the div that has the text of 30th on this screen and click it, is it going to click this one? Which I'll say, comments. I need a poll option. I'm going to get me some, some effects next time. Oh, y'all got real quiet on me. Everybody was talking of a storm until I asked the question. <laughs> is it going to click this one? No. 30 is there a couple of times. Exactly. That's exactly correct. So, or the other one depend on selected. Exactly. So, it's going to click like December 30. Yep. Yep. 30 appears twice. Exactly. All right. So if I say click 30, what what driver is going to do is find the very first div that has 30 in it and click that bad boy. So that would be this one, which is actually December 30th, not January 30th. So we have to do more than say, just give me the div. Right. We need to um, figure out something a little better. So I'm looking at this one. And I'm looking at its parent. It has some classes here. So it has like other months on it and this one um this 30th um, has a current month class so i could say find me let's see how we're going to do this um find me and i this td has some attributes too so i don't maybe i'm not even going to focus on the div i'll focus on the td so find me the td um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this in CSS, yes, I'm going to expire because um, it's too complicated for me to figure out how to do it in CSS right now. But y'all can work on that and get back to me if you want to. But yeah, I want to say give me a TDD that has um, the day, right? Day equals 30th. That should give me two. Yes, see here, two. And also has, um, contains a class called current month. Is that a thing? Yes. So that gives me, is that the right one? That's the right one. Okay. So I'm going to grab this one. Oh, I'm sorry, y'all. I left the comment up. Sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> All right. So this is what I'm doing. Um, I say find me a TD that has an attribute of date that equals to 30th. And it contains um, a class called current month. I didn't do equals like I did here because this contains more than one class. So I hate to even use classes for locating stuff because class names can change just for styling. But in this case, I'm kind of forced to do so since there's no ID here. So I'll try to do my part to be a little bit more um, thorough by saying not equals, but contains in case new classes are added or removed. All right. So I'm going to copy this. And uh, we'll make one more. What was that even? I forgot what this is. Oh, the date. All right. So private by day. Day of month, maybe. All right. Equals. This time we're using XPath. All right. 
Great. Um, so then we could say choose day. And um, I'm not going to give it the whole date because all it needs is that little um, number. And speaking of that number, I have it hard coded here. So I'm going to change this because this is going to be different every time. Right. So this needs to be a placeholder versus just a, um, a buy. So I'm going to actually change this to a string. And when I do stuff like this, I add a little suffix like this so that anybody who implements this knows that they have to do some work here. And this is going to need to be a number. So I'm going to put a percent D right there as the placeholder. So in choose date, I'm going to just say, give it the day of the month. And let's make this method. Yes. And um, we're going to make the buy right here. So buy um, locator equals buy XPath. And we need to do a format. So I'm doing string format. And this is from, yes, string. Java dot I Java dot Lang maybe yeah Java dot Lang and I'm gonna say give me that that little placeholder and then replace that number with what our caller wants us to use right so once I have that now I have the locator I can just say go ahead and click it now all right boom. Okay, so once we open and then we choose the month, month and year, and then we choose the day, I think we're done. So if we say that, boom. So now I just will need to verify this. So I need to be able to get this and also put in like a date format. The, so let's look at this. So this is the input. But I don't see any text inside of it. So the way this widget is designed, there's no text. So I don't even know if I can get this text. Let's just see if we can. Um, choose date, blah, blah, blah. And then let's just print it out. Print, I mean, um, selected date. Just print it out for now. And we'll see... Driver dot find element. Do we have that input already? I hope so. Yeah, ID date picker, right? Um, let's just say bye. I'm just I'm hard coding this right here because it's just a little test run, and then get the, get the text. All right. So let's see what this does. Um, All right, so we're going to say go ahead and print. Did it print? Not yet. Yeah, it's nothing. <laughs> um, that's what I thought. You can't see inside of here. There's no text here, so that's not going to work. Let's see if there's something else because we got to be able to verify this, right? So we got to know what's there. Thank you. Angie's the best. <laughs> All right, so um, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. This looks promising. This selected date thing. All right, so um, if I get this element and I get this attribute, except this is a zero, so I guess. The, is that a bug or do, do the months start at zero in here? Let's see. Yeah, February is one. All right, so we're going to just need to add one here. So let's get this calendar 
Let's get this attribute. Let's parse it and build it into an object. Okay. And we've done a lot of that already. Um, in another example, right? The one for the month. So um, stop this and let's delete this. So choose the day. And then I'm going to make the method to get that information. So let's say public local date, uh, get selected, get selected date. All right. And we already have this calendar. That's what it was on, right? Calendar, yes. So let me just grab this little attribute. So I'm going to say, okay, find me the calendar and get the attribute of selected date. All right, so that'll give me this string. I need to split it. Looks like I need to split on a dash. So let's say dot split on the dash. This will give me an array with each of the things. So var dates, uh, date. I'm going to say, I don't know, components or something. Uh, fields. <laughs> All right. Um, split on that. And then after we split this, we can make our new date. So we'll say return um, local date dot of. And again, year, which needs to be an integer. This is going to be a string. So we say integer dot parse. And um, this time it's the first one. The year is the first one. So that's the year. The month, since it's already in numeric form, I'm going to use that overloaded of method that takes a numeric form. So that is the second one, and we just add one to it, right? So I'm going to say um, parse int. Give me the second field. And then add one to it. All right. That's the month. And then the final one is the, the day, of the, day of the month, right? So fields two. Oh, and this needs to be one. Okay. I think that's it. All right. Okay, and then let's return this here. So after you choose a date, let's just go ahead and give you a date back. Um, and we'll return it by saying get selected date. Okay, and that way in our test, we can say, okay, this is the date we wanted. So we said 1989. And then we selected it. Um, and let's say var selected date. And then let's just verify the two. So assert that the date to select is equal to the selected date. And okay. All right. All right. Fingers crossed. Let's run this again. This is the real deal now. So this is like everything on the line, pass or fail. Look at that beautifulness. I love automation. Like just looking at this run, I don't have to do anything. I've like created a robot, basically. Look at us. Look at us. Oh, oh so beautiful. So it looks like it works. Um, let's just make sure it works. <laughs> um, I'm going to change, change something here. Let's say minus a month, for example. So anytime I run my test, like I get excited about the green, but you have to prove to me that the green actually means something for me to really be excited. 
because you could be lying to me. Right. Okay, somebody asked, why do I make um, the default, all the methods public? So I explained this a little bit earlier. Um, oh, look at that. Yeah, oh, that's what we wanted, the test to fail, right? So the reason I make them public is because tests might want to mix and match. Maybe they don't want to do the happy path, so they just want to choose, um, I don't know, the day without doing something else or whatever. I don't know, just goofy things that testers think about. So I like to make them like that. All right. So if we look at this, this is failed. And we could see, yes, it said it expected it to be 1120, but it wasn't. So perfect. I feel very confident in this now. So now we have everything we need. The future one should be very easy. We just kind of changed the date here. I don't think we need any more code. So we said future is okay. So here's the thing about future. So I was about to, y'all almost tricked me. I was about to hard code this August 3rd, 2020. On August 4th, guess what? This is no longer the future anymore. So I'm not going to hard code a date here because I don't feel like updating tests all the time, right? So let's just say um, for this test, we're going to say just use like now. Um, what's today, and then add some months to it. So we could add things to it. So let's say like we just add seven months to it or something like that. All right. That way, no matter where we are, we're just adding to it. Select the date, assert the date. So let's run this one. And that passed very fast. And then the current date, um, I'm just going to say for current, same kind of thing. Except we probably could do like um, now, just boom. I don't want to say like today, I don't think. Um, let's just say like, let's pick any day of the month. Um, with day of the month, like. Every month has a 15, right? So let's just, this will be like current month. I'll call this current, current month. All right. And let's run this one. And voila. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. All right. So we've done it. Let me just kind of recap everything for you. So in, we created a component. Matter of fact, let's write this recipe because I'm, I'm going to need to write a blog post <laughs> after this. So let's just uh, figure out, like, if we were talking about a recipe, what does that look like? And I'm going to say, like, okay, I have um, the ingredients. Ingredients. The ingredients would be a date picker component component um the current date where we are we need to figure out where we are and then the destination date destination date so that's the ingredients and then the instructions would be okay if the text field is edible just send the text the date, the date in the right format, and you're done. Like, you are lucky, buy your devs a cookie, all right? If not, that's everybody else, then um, we need to, what do we need to do? We need to compare the current date with the destination. We need to figure out which arrow to use, present or future. Um, click to get to destination, month, and year, and then click on date. Be careful of dupes. All right, so that's the recipe. You can implement this in your favorite programming language and your favorite um, automation tool. All right. Okay, let's see if we have any questions.
questions. So I'm going to go back to where's my okay, here we go. So, oh, thank you, thank you, everybody. I'm getting some beautiful uh comments. Thank you. No one has ever been bit by that one, right? Exactly. We're dancing, we're laughing, we're having a great time. Okay. Any questions? Anybody had any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Um, any questions? Any questions? Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad it was fun. I wanted it to be fun. Something, you know, lighthearted, but still educational. Um, Awesome. Thank y'all so much for coming. If you have any ideas of a recipe you want me to do for next time, I haven't picked next week's. Is it is it real to check for common date picker in our projects? Is it? Yeah, yeah. So like these these components usually exist on like multiple pages. And if you're wanting to automate your test and you need to select a date from them, it's like tedious, right? So that took us an hour and it was like all of us together doing just that part of it. And usually this is of like a bigger stream of, um, of the test of steps. So you'll like, Oh, I need to pick a date. I need to do this. I need to do that. Then I submit this overall form. Right. So, and having that component there, um, now everything is built out. It can take any date and now your tests simply have to just submit the date and they don't have to worry about anything else. Yes, this will be recorded. I hope so. It should be recording. We'll see if not. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll make another one without all of our fun times. Um, all right. Okay. So I'm going to go. If you all want me to, somebody said, I think you might get a problem when you test this on March 31st. Okay. All right, Pessy. Let's see. Let's see. Pessy is challenging us. All right. And he might be right. So let's see. March 31st. Any year, Pessy? Um, 2020. March 31st. All right. All right, let's see. Because I don't want I don't want to give y'all a bad recipe, child. Oh, he's right. Look at that. Oh, this is so beautiful. Okay. Unable to locate 31st with current month. Let's see why that is. I thought I was about to let y'all go. Blame. Pessy. All right. So um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Date picker. This is fun. Now this becomes fun now because we got to like figure it out. So right here, we're going to debug this. Oh, it's not a real date. Thank you. He tried to set me up. Okay. <laughs> if it's not a real date, then yeah, you're gonna have a problem, right? So you you shouldn't use your date picker in your test. I I realize that a lot of you love testing, but you don't pick. You don't say, "Hey, I want a test that a customer has chosen." Oh, March thirty first is the date. Why y'all lying to me? Here's a date. Let me see why I didn't um it didn't work though. So current date, and it has current month, and there's no other 31st here. All right, so now we got to debug before we get here, right? So let's go here. Let's go there. Right. All right, so let's try to debug this. Where did it break? It broke... right here okay so let's come here and let's let's run it could be the month index yeah let's see this is exciting this is slow if anybody here like has connected um why is it going so far back? This is not what I wanted. Hold on. Um, okay, so let's say 2020. 
and we say March, and we say 31. All right, so let's run it again. Yeah, somebody tell IntelliJ, like, I don't know what this is. I got upgraded, and this runs a little bit slow. All right, so let's see what we got here. Mm. It didn't go back enough months. It's on April. So I think that has to do with the days of the month, right? So if I said, what's today's date? Um, today is the 20, 22nd, right? So if I said 22nd, and I'm comparing the two months with March 31st, then technically that's not like a full month, right? If we do the subtraction between the months, it's not gonna, it's gonna be like zero for the month. So we need to update the date, I think. So when we say choose the date, choose the month, let's go inside of choose month. Um, okay, so. Click the arrows. That's all that's doing. Get in this. Um, this part. Get the current period. Let's change this. Because remember that date? Remember this? We just kind of made it up. And we said just get today's date. But if that's not an equal amount, like if it's not later later than um, the other date, then it's going to mess up. So let's let's say with the date of the month that whatever the date is that they passed in, date dot get day of the month. So let's change it to whatever date that they gave. So for example, when we say April, when we say March 31st, then we're, oh, that's going to mess up too. Because then it's going to say April 31st, which is not a date. Oh, this is so good. This is really good because I think this is going to, like, break. Mm. Let me see. I think this is going to break. All right, I'm going to let y'all go after this, and I'm going to figure it out. And I'll, I'm going to do a blog post after this, so I'll write all this up. Yeah, that broke because um, that's not valid. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, so we need to get that little piece right here. Let me make a note to myself to do fix this girl all right and then i'm gonna update that um on the blog post i'll tell you what that was if you all like have ideas i'm more than welcome um i'll welcome them so send them to me all right all right thank y'all so much for tuning in yes everything will is recorded i believe um, and I'm going to do a blog post, so I'll stick the video in there as well as the write-up with the code and everything like that, okay? The next one is next Wednesday. When is next Wednesday? I don't know. Um, next Wednesday is when I'll be back here, same time. I don't know what I'm going to do, which recipe. So if you have a request, then let me know, okay? All right. Thank y'all so much for coming to my very first stream. See y'all next week. Bye. Oh, I should show y'all me. Let me do a proper bye-bye. You know, I'm new to this, child. All right, so let me do a little pop proper. Okay, all right. So here I am. I'm still smiling, you know, sweating a little bit. But, um, yeah, I'll see you all next week, okay? All right, bye.